What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. So, I just got to watch the Jesus Soto Carras versus Andre Berto fight this morning. Last night, I had to work, and then after, I went out and got something to eat and some drinks, and then I went to see the Wolverine. Why am I not healing? So, check out the Wolverine if you haven't seen it. Um, as far as this fight, I did my prediction. I was clearly wrong. I had Andre Berto winning. I thought Andre Berto's speed would be too much. I knew that Jesus Soto Caras is a tough customer. I mentioned in my video that he has a granite chin. Um, we know these things about Soto Caras. Um, but recently he beat Aiden, and I thought he looked good in that fight. But I thought Andre Berto's speed and power would probably be overwhelming to him, um, and then he probably would get stopped. Clearly wrong. I did do a special on my channel called Egos The Crossroads. I did list Andre Berto as one of those fighters in desperate need of a win to keep their career alive. Um, I felt that way, and I still feel that way. He lost three out of four of his last fights, Andre Berto. And again, this is a guy who is supposed to be elite, or at one time was considered an elite fighter. Um, pre-Victor Ortiz, I mean, he was considered the future of the sport of boxing. So, obviously, when you have those type of, um, I guess, recommendations from the boxing channels, from the promoters, from the commentators, the bar is raised high for you, and you have to live up to it, or you're, you're not going to be able to meet those expectations. As far as Andre Berto, he just is not meeting those expectations. So let me give you some insight to this particular fight. Um, I thought Jesus Soto Carras was dominant. I mean, there's only a few rounds that I may, like maybe one or two. I didn't really score it per se. At first I did, and then I stopped just to kind of watch because there's a lot of action. It was a great fight, um, but Soto Carras was dominant. He had... A mindset going in that he wouldn't be denied. Soto Carras is also a fighter who was at a crossroads. I didn't mention him in, in that segment that I did the crossroads because he's kind of already borderline being pushed out and this just resurrected his career. I mean this was a solid win. Great name for him. Um, he looked impressive in the fight so um, he definitely added some some fights to his career. Um, and extended that hopefully he gets a big payday and he went in there with the mindset that he can't be denied um, that he's at the end of his rope and he needs something big and, and, and he pulled off he pulled that off um, round run Soto Carras he started faster than I can even recall seeing him first of all let me say this I've seen several Soto Carras's fights even his losses to like to Gabriel Rosado and Maidana um he looked good against Maidana. Uh, he had his moments. He looked good against Aiden. I mean, I've seen several of his fights. And overall, this is probably one of his best performances against his bigger named fighters. Not like his first five fights of, of his career or anything like that. But in terms of his marquee named opponents, I would say this is one of his best performances. So round one, Kadas. Got off to a faster start than I'm used to seeing. He looked really focused. He was using a jab and he was digging to the body. He kept up this trend throughout the fight. Just vicious body shots. Almost um, reminiscent to like a Leo Santa Cruz in the lower divisions. Um, just like a true Mexican fighter with just vicious body shots. He was tattooing Berto's body. Berto looked hurt in the first round. Um... It was just overall a great round for Soto. He, he looked very focused. See, this is the thing that bothers me with um, Andre Berto. Andre Berto, I don't know if his age, I mean, he's from Miami, which is pretty much a, a flashy place with a lot, lot of glitz and glamour. Um, he's in the Bay now. He's in California, different things. Certain fighters, I really question if they're still focused as fighters. I mean, you got fighters like Lucas Matisse, and it looks like this man is on, they call him the machine. Lucas Matisse looks like he's on a mission to destroy and get respect. And then you have other people who seem like they kind of want to do this 
for the stardom, for the celebrity. They they get kind of caught up in that in that lifestyle. Um, Andre Berto and Victor Ortiz are both fighters who I can picture that. Like I really question um, at this point, are they more concerned with like being flashy and 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 that kind of thing, or are they are they just supremely dedicated? Like some of these poor fighters, like Leo Santa Cruz, who lives with his family and he has like nine family members and an ailing sick brother who he's trying to find a cure for his brother and and pay medical expenses. I mean, the level of passion, I, I really question it in fighters like Victor Ortiz. Um, I'm not hating. Get your money, Victor Ortiz. Dancing with the stars. That wasn't a good look to me based on the circumstances. Your last, you lost your, your, your previous two. Your last fight, you got upset by an underdog who came up in weight and he broke your jaw. And your first ambition is to come back to Dancing with the Stars. And we still haven't seen you in the ring. That's just an extremely long layoff. You you extended your layoff by um, going to Dancing with the Stars. Now I'm hearing he's going to be in the Expendables 3. Same thing with Andre Berto. I just I feel like he's kind of caught up in being celebrity. And it, it to me, it shows in the fight. Like in the first round, it looks like Berto's focused on trying to be cute. Adrian Broner is another fighter like that. Luckily for Adrian Broner, no one can really say much because he, he's won all his fights and he's undefeated. But for a fighter like Berto, I put you on the crossroad. I'm not saying I'm just the, the epitome of boxing, but it's not just me. There are other people that agreed with me. Um, and that's really where your career is, on the crossroad. So instead of trying to look cute and do these war cries and um, try to look flashy and then in the Guerrero fight you come out with the Philly shell it's like almost like a disregard to to your opponent like you feel you're so much advanced and, and beyond them and um, you underestimate him it seems like because he, he did the same thing in the Guerrero fight he kind of came out like catchy like like he knows his speed it's like his shit don't stink kind of attitude and to me after losing to Victor Ortiz, that should have snapped you in gear, and you should have been like on a on a mission, like, oh, I gotta fuck these dudes up, fuck being cute, fuck trying to be flashy in the ring and showboating, just win the fight. Um, the Guerrero fight, he did the same thing, coming out in the Philly shell and shaking his head, like that didn't hurt me, that didn't hurt me. He did the same thing in this fight with Soto Carras, where it looks like he's he he cares more about how he looks doing it than what he's doing. That's my honest opinion. What I've seen um, recently with Berto and his demeanor. And I don't think he has the luxury to make that kind of decision. I think you just need to look good and win your fight and get back to the position you feel you deserve. So that was one of the mistakes I think Berto made in his last two fights. The fight with Guerrero. Not to mention these fights are coming up against long layoffs. So you're, you're at a long layoff due to the Peds scandal. And you fought Robert Guerrero and then you came out while you're shaking your head and doing war cries and thinking your speed and power is going to be enough to deter a fighter like Robert Guerrero. He's bombing on you and throwing several punches. Same thing with Soto Carras. Soto Carras, throughout this whole fight, um, threw a high volume of punches. Like I said, I would only give Berto a few rounds, to be honest. Um, I'd have to look at it again in detail to see which rounds they were, but... Uh, I definitely wouldn't give him more than three rounds um, in this fight. Karas looked dominant. Uh, round two was a definite round that I would have gave Berto. It's a great comeback round for Berto. Uh, after being hurt in the first round, he looked good. Um, he really couldn't miss with the right. He was sneaking in like sneaky counter rights, like counter right uppercut. And it looked like it had uh, Soto Karas wobbled, uh, temporarily buzzed. And... This is where his speed difference, or the speed difference in the two fighters was really showing to me. Um, skipped to round four. That was a huge round, great round for Soto Carras. Had Berto in trouble, and again, he was he was ranging, and he was digging to the body. As the Showtime commentators mentioned, Soto Carras wasn't really using his height to his advantage in every single spot in this fight. However, the thing that let me know that Berto was in trouble was the fact that Berto was the shorter fighter, the faster fighter in terms of hand speed, and 
he was being bested at what you would assume would be his bigger advantage, um, and that would be fighting on the inside. Fighting on the inside, when you're fast, you have sneaky like uppercuts and, and things like that, you should have the advantage, but whether it's on the outside or the inside, in most exchanges, Soto Karas had the advantage. So that's not a good sign. Um, if you're a fighter, you got to play to your strengths and try to nullify your weaknesses. And I don't think Berto did that good. Berto hurt his shoulder some point, his right shoulder. So he just completely stopped using the right. Um, and when I say completely, I mean, he really wasn't using the right. Like if they had punch stats that separated by arm, then you would see after a certain point, uh, I think it was round five, you would see how many times he really threw the right. And if he did throw it, it was like very lazy and um, I guess it couldn't apply too much pressure or really throw it with any kind of conviction. So round five, all Soto. Berto appears to have a hurt right shoulder and then he, he was just kind of like a wounded duck and he was getting tagged. He was getting tagged up. It looked like this fight might be getting stopped in the fifth round. And my other bone to pick with Andre Berto is this. This is the fight game. This is the hurt business. Things happen in the sport of boxing. Um, you got a guy in the opposing corner and his goal, his paycheck, his future paycheck is dependent on the damage he can do to you. That's what you sign up for. So props to Berto for showing heart. However, I think a lot of times, oftentimes, Andre Berto gets into sticky situations and it takes far too long for him to calm everything down and get back into gear after a setback. And that's something that's going to hurt him in future fights. The ability to adapt is perhaps one of the most underrated skills of boxing. Not punching power, not chin, your ability to adapt. There's going to be adversity unless you're fighting bums. And if you're fighting bums, then um, good luck with that. But the ability to adapt and make those subtle changes to counteract what somebody's doing, something you may not have anticipated, something you felt that you didn't see coming, that is huge in the sport of boxing. And I don't think Andre Berto does that too great. And if he does do it, it usually takes, like, he loses three rounds trying to settle back down versus another fighter like a Floyd Mayweather or like a Rigondeaux. You'll see Rigondeaux. Watch the fight with Yermo Rigondeaux and Roberto Marroquin. Marroquin had Rigondeaux buzzed. It looked like Rigo was showboating. He got caught up and he was wobbled. But he was able to kick himself into gear like, okay, I got to stop clowning around, get serious, buckle down and do what he had to do. Um, Floyd Mayweather does it all the time. Zab Judah was chopping him up in the early rounds and he made those adjustments to win that fight. If the trend of Zab Judah chopping him up and everything went throughout the fight, Zab would have won that fight. However, Zab lost because he kind of stuck to the same game plan, whereas Mayweather seen his initial game plan wasn't fully working, started going to the body, slowing Zab down, and then the rest is history. Another fighter who lost his fight, but you've still seen that adjustment, Austin Trout, most recently against the heavy-handed Canelo Alvarez. So Canelo had um, Trout hurt with the shot he didn't see coming. Trout was, like, dramatically hurt. And some commentators were saying they might have scored it a 10-9 round based on what Trout did when he got back up. He looked sharp, he looked focused, and he stayed composed in a sticky situation, in a situation where... It's easy to lose your head and be frantic. That's what Andre Berto doesn't do, in my opinion. And if he does do it, he doesn't do it quick enough. He has a situation like with his shoulder or his eyes swollen up in the Robert Guerrero fight. And he doesn't stay composed. He doesn't immediately adapt. It's like he's befuddled and frantic and he doesn't know what to do. And in the interim, while he's waiting and deciding what to do, He's getting tagged up and, and punched. Robert Guerrero is not going to stop. A fighter like Jesus Soto Carras is not going to stop. So you have to make those adjustments on the fly in order to battle that adversity. And I don't think Andre Berto does it good. Like I said, props to Berto for having heart and um, weathering the storm as long as he could. Um, the fight ended with uh, Berto getting knocked out in the 12th round. He he had like a little bit of time left and I mean he, he got knocked out. 
and that's what happens in the sport of boxing. This is going to be a long road back to the top, to the mentions um, that Berto was getting prior to his Victor Ortiz loss. Um, I hate to count a fighter out, but based on what he's showing, I don't really know that I would have faith in him getting back to the top. I told you in the Crossroads segment that if he loses his fight, this may be it for Berto in terms of like big money fights, unless he does like a rematch with some of his losses like Robert Guerrero um, or like a, a rematch with Victor Ortiz. Problem also with um, a fighter like Andre Berto, sometimes fighters have too much confidence or too much heart. If you look at Amir Khan, Amir Khan was at a point in his career recently where he realized a third loss is going to be a dramatic blow to his career. He lost a controversial decision against Lamont Peterson in a tough fight. Lamont Peterson definitely exploited certain holes in Khan's game plan. Khan gave um, Lamont Peterson some problems and had a knockdown. Immediately after that, he lost to an underdog. Danny Garcia stopped him inside of four. Khan and his handlers knew that if Khan lost a third consecutive fight, it's going to be hard to to make a case for Khan fighting Mayweather or getting big title shot fights. So they gave him a soft touch. They had a guy come up from 135 to 140, um, Carlos Molina, guy who had like seven knockouts and 20 plus fights, not really a devastating puncher. And those fights were made. And then after he fought Julio Diaz in a tough fight for Khan at a catch weight. But that's the confidence building. With Andre Berto, I kind of feel bad for him as a career wise because they're giving him tough fights or he's accepting tough fights. Whereas he might want to get his confidence back. I mean, after a 15 month layoff, if I was a fighter in that weight division, I'm way bigger than these these <laughs> these fighters. I'm like six four, two thirty five. But um, if I was in their weight division, after a 15 month layoff, I don't really know that I would want to fight a Robert Guerrero, someone with the chin, somebody who was on a, a credible win streak, someone who had an interim belt and defeated an undefeated fighter in Selchuk Aydin. I don't know that's the fight that I would want to take immediately after a 15-month layoff of inactivity. And then after that loss, after I got beat up in that fight, and like I said in my last video, my eyes looked like huge fortune cookies, like Andre Berto, he looked like Buddha. Um, after that, I don't know that I would want to take on a fight with Soto Caras, who... Just won his last fight against Aiden, also the fighter Robert Guerrero beat. And also, he has the height advantage, the reach advantage. Another fighter with a crazy chin. Another fighter who fights with volume punching. And another fighter who's pretty much relentless. Unless you knock him out, he's not going to stop. He was upset that they stopped the fight in the Maidana fight. And he looked like he was considerably hurt. And again, this dude, he's, he's like a margarito type um, that... Unless you get him out of there, he's, he's really not going to give up. And he can be a problem at any point just because he's not going to give up, just like a Margarito. Um, I feel in the Margarito fight with Cotto, the second one, had the ref not stopped Margarito's eye with the, or stopped the fight with his eye situation, Margarito may have, may have came on because he, he was not going to give up and it looked like Cotto was getting winded. So, again, I don't know that these are the fights that I feel I would want to take before um before like after a loss and after long layoffs and stuff like that i don't really think it's wise so that's just my little piece on andre Berto and the in the matching sometimes you need those tune-up fights those confidence booster fights people who who you you match up with a little bit better um i did think Berto would beat soto caras but um i definitely was wrong in that regard and again i don't know if you want to take these tough fights after long layoffs and defeats and you got to think of your career in the long run and what that does for you. Jesus Soto Caras, he did what he had to do. Uh, definitely an excellent fighter to watch. He looks like he's improving. As I mentioned in my prediction, at one point he had lost five out of seven of his fights and he was definitely on the downside, but this resurrected his career. Um, you can make a case for him to, to be up there with, pretty much most of the top guys except for like Mayweather I mean I don't I don't really think I know some people are going to say oh Soto or Mayweather I don't know but um I think Soto Caras and Robert Guerrero would be an awesome time that'd be an awesome fight 
I would definitely watch that. Um, I would also like to see like maybe even a Keith Thurman versus um, Soto Carras. I think that is an excellent fight. Uh, Soto has a chin. Keith Thurman has power. Make it happen. So those are my votes for who Soto Carras should fight next. Let me know what you guys thought of the Andre Berto fight. What do you think of Berto? What's next for Soto Carras? Let me know. Leave a comment. As always, hey, comment, or subscribe. Till next video, it's Ego signing off.